Hi, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophie, your pilot into the universe of Chinese. We are going to continue our journey in discovering one new Chinese expression a day. Yesterday, we talked about 果然如此. So, fruitation or the consequence of things have this vibe or this result. 果然 is the result of something. 如此, as expected, as what's in your mind, you predicted. So that's 果然如此. Today we have continuation of this 然. 然, in this case, I translate it as ly. So cheerfully as a, turn it into adjective. I think that's appropriate in this context because 心然 is describing of somebody's mood, cheerful mood. And then with this cheerful mood, somebody is going to order the pen, meaning going to will the pen to write down something, right? So start to write. And so this become a description of the action that make it ad adverb. So that becomes cheerfully. So with this vibe of cheerfulness, so that's cheerfully, okay. 新人命笔 is today's expression. So 新 we have this jin on the left side. We can say it's the sound maker, but I no longer explain things as the sound maker and the meaning maker. All of them, to my eyes, I try to come up with a meaning, explain it from symbolic meaning to make the uh, semantic meaning of contemporary, like how it's related to us, like projected over thousands of years, and like to today's meaning. Xinran in contemporary Chinese, it means happily or cheerfully, right? Um, that came with this jin on the left side, which means axe, like cutting sound, chopping off fresh wood. May not be fresh. I mean, chopping off the log. So that logging, jammer jack, jammer jack, hearing that sound. So that's the wood chopping sound. The right side is doing this, yawning. So this is a person's sign, and this is apparently the top of that person's head position, and then have this air, this puffs coming out. Three of them is a, enough to say it's a recurring pattern. So it, the whole thing is like a, somebody is hushing the, the air, puffing the air out. So that's yawning. Well, you will say, ah, act sounding like yawning, make it cheerful. <laughs> Um, I would imagine this wood chopping. Why you chop chop up wood? There are several functions of chopping up wood. One is chopping up wood for cooking purpose, or chopping up wood to build a house, like a bigger construction project, or chopping up wood for use the lumber to warm your room. Right. In any case, wood chopping is um domestic living. It's um something generated something related to food, to warmth, to comfort. So it's a, it's a good thing. And in fact, this chopping, um, wood chopping symbol was used to pair to, to create the meaning of new, something new. So you can see this may historically have this connotation of something good, positive, constructive is happening this wood chopping. And then with the yawning, yawning doesn't necessarily mean somebody is falling asleep, is tired, low energy, but it's, it's almost like somebody is ushing the sound, like ha, 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 right? Or Santa's ho, ho, ho. It's a recurring sound of the, the, the human vocal sound repeated pattern. A lot of times that's like a giggling, laughing sound. So this constructive laughing, positive laughing, I mean, it depicts the cheerfulness. Okay. That's my explanation uh, of how xin, this axing down wood, chopping wood paired with this yawning or this um, guttural <laughs> air sound of uh, recurring um I don't know how to say it, a vocal vibration recurring. Uh, that could mean the positive, happy sound making. 
Okay, ran again, that's burning, dog, meat, three symbols together. Uh, uh, it means burning, means energy, means the vibe, some emissions, some kind of energy, right? And the food aroma involved. So the whole atmosphere, like we're surrounded. So that becomes eventually almost like English um, L-Y, like extra to convert that to mean the state of something the vibe of something, right? So in this case, it's cheerfully vibe. So it's cheerful. Okay, me. We have the mouth symbol, means giving order. The side view, punched the human body, kind of like doing, doing this. So that means submission. So receiving order, become humble, you know, bow down. So all that body gesture means somebody who is receiving the order. And then this, Triangle thing, that means authority. So under the authority, somebody giving order, somebody receiving the order. And this picture frame gives you this order, this power structure of society, right? Um, and that eventually extended in today's context, it means ordering. So, Okay, because we have a pen after it. What do you mean by ordered pen? So this is an author cheerfully wanting to write down something. All of a sudden, this author got inspiration. It has something to say. And then it's ordering. It's a will, the pen. So in this case, it's the pen that received the order. And this mouse, this order giver is having ideas or having inspirations that they want to execute, want it to put it to pen, to pen it down, what's going through the mind. So that's what mean B is about. Mean almost like not exactly order in the sense of interpersonal, like one person, like within that power structure, the higher rank person, the leader gives order to the follower, right? There is no this structural power structural uh, chain uh, interchange there it's not in that sense but me in this case is your mental power your ideas you are ordering that put it to pen to externalize so you already have something in your mind generated you want to express it so that's like you are ordering yourself you're ordering your pen to write it down okay so this pen have the three finger hand, uh, hand symbol, right hand holding the brush and having this structure that's about the brush. So it looks just like the brush, right? Mm. If you ever take an observation of Chinese brush because ancient times Chinese write um, by soaking a bush of hair, lots of times an animal hair, soak it into ink and then put it on on paper and the whole brush, it looks like a brush, right? Things are gathered. So all that fiber are gathered toward um, the end, um, the, the end of the pen uh, or the brush. So this structure kind of was told us, hold the, the structure of, it, uh, of the brush. So these are the fibers kind of puffing out, but then there need to be a source to bundle them together. So things are orderly, they are going in the same direction. You can kind of use it as a tool to put cohesive um, symbols on the paper, right? So that's what brush is about. So then there gotta be this horizontal line to, to, to uh, gather everything, put them into bind into to one unit. Um, so that that is, this what this horizontal line is about. So the brush, pen holding the brush, that's what the writing device is about. And then the top is a bamboo symbol because a lot of times this uh, this fiber holder, this 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 fiber holder, put it in a tube so that it's easier to 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 hold in a hand to be held in a hand. That's made of bamboo because bamboo happen to be like hollow in the middle, right? So the brush can easily, the fiber can be filled within that hollow. So that, that's the whole structure of 
material, the handwriting, posture, all that visually depict the ancient brush, um, brush writing. Um, so in ancient pen was a brush. So that's what a pen looks like. So alter the pen as if, okay, you're externalized your ideas, put it to pen as if the pen has its own life, right? To carry out your order. So you, you, the mind giving the order of the pen. That's what Xin Ren Ming Bi is about. So in contemporary uh, translated into English, that what makes sense to us will be cheerfully right or happily right. The context of that or who popularized this expression is in 1958. You can see this guy, right? Chairman Mao, influential figure, the first, I mean, the founding father of communist China in 1949. So he was started as a group of, with a group of guys using the communism as their, you know, ideology and take into power after Japanese occupation of China. Okay, at least that's the textbook version I was taught. So 1958, almost 10 years after the founding of the new China, right, communist China, that's when he wrote this piece called and the plague, Song Wen Shen, like say goodbye to the plague of Wen Shen. Shen actually means God. God. Um, in in English, it means we use Shen corresponding to the God concept. That means non-human super being. So Wen Shen is some some natural disaster that affect human life in such a large large scale that we have to regard it as a sort of super power uh, over the whole society. So that's a plague. That's how Chinese express it, uh, express the plague. So it's a, it's a sort of, I guess, animal based, not exactly, blah, 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 but okay. It's a it's sort of um, blood sucking worm that get into a human body and uh, causing deaths of people. So it's kind of like a pandemic back then. And it's related to irrigation system, like how the, the farmland, because a lot of Chinese farmland is rice patch, or yes, rice patch. So it's a lot of water soaked plant growing in water and in that wet environment, uh, such blood sucking worm uh, lives there and then took out people's lives by infecting people somehow. So I don't know exactly know the details, nor did I live in the south of China to firsthand experience that, but it was recorded as one of the major plagues plaguing the land of China back then in the first 10 years. And by 1958, somehow, somehow, the whole uh, medical resources of China got mobilized and everything kind of regarded almost like a life and death battle to battle against this little worm. Uh, plague that eventually uh, they declare victory to finally, finally they find a way to conquer that so that people don't don't die en masse because of such little worm infection. So he published a poem called End the Plague, Song Wenshen, and this is his handwriting. Look at that. <laughs> okay. As a Chinese even if I know simplified Chinese, I can only decode partially, maybe a tenth of what is what he's writing. So his handwriting is called Cao Shu. It's like super, super cursive. And I guess writing, because because it's a 2D space, right? You put your brush down and write in a certain order, and there is a this spatial tension in between that you can create that kind of exemplify uh, or demonstrate your personality. So from handwriting, we can almost read into a little bit of his pet personality. He's claimed to be a rom romanticism poet. So besides a leader, he is also uh, regarded as a poet because he, he wrote down many, many passages that you know, generations, a whole generation of Chinese did nothing like waste 10 years of their life, recite every day his writing. That's how historically 
established and influential. Influential, he become the most known poet because everybody was forced to recite his poem for 10 years, something like that. Okay, luckily I'm not that generation, but that happened in history. And so this Xin Ren Ming Bi was used as the pretext to like he was basically praising, like gave himself a back pat um, to say, good job, we, we win this, we, we, we end the play. Now I'm happily right that what we accomplished. That's how he said himself, Xin Ren Ming Bi. And that was then popularized. I guess a lot of people, copycats, who want to glorify their themselves or somehow start to copy this expression. And Xin Ren Ming Bi was probably uh, used by other writers who Xin Ren Ming Bi write about something to you know sing praise of the big accomplishment of something that we all know what happened after 1958. Okay, that's about it. Catching to the currency of thinking by one word a day with Sophie. See you another day.